All right, so I went and saw Black Adam over the weekend, and well, it was certainly, hmm, it was certainly a movie. Let me put this in perspective for you. We have Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing a superhero, or well, an anti-hero, I guess, since those are so popular nowadays, that is Superman-level power scaling-wise with lightning and kills people in a DC cinematic universe that has a more divisive fan base than even Marvel. Made by a studio that had the fastest reboot to a movie that I've seen in my entire life in The Suicide Squad and can't even get a Superman movie right. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know about this. Being honest, I don't know if that's a hard sell or not, but after Black Adam had two hours to chew me up and spit me out as a hopefully satisfied customer, unlike some studios and shows that I know. Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Yeah, I'm looking at you, She-Hulk. I can easily and honestly pretty confidently say that I was. Black Adam is a superhero movie returned back to form, which will probably end up being the title of this video because it was honestly the first and main thing that kept popping into my mind when the credits started rolling. A straight origin action superhero flick, nothing else to it. You can surely tell Dwayne The Rock Johnson came to Warner Brothers with a vision, a vision that he probably wasn't willing to change, and it's honestly pretty incredible to see it translated to the big screen as a fan. It was big budget. The action was plentiful and full of CGI. The characters weren't absolutely brain dead. The script wasn't telling me how to care or how to feel or fuck it, how to even think about real world problems. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson was, well, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He was charismatic and an absolute presence on the screen. And while yes, Black Adam didn't offer anything new to the scene of the superhero films, the return to form had offered something much, much more than anything new. It offered fun. <laughs> so funny. Now I'll be damned if I don't give you a brief rundown of the plot because if you were anything like me, it felt like you were kind of only watching Black Adam kick Aquaman's ass for around an hour and 30 minutes. The origin movie starts off with its origin scene easy enough, explaining to us the audience the world of Kondok and its people. And let me tell you, they ain't doing so good because they're slaves. Obviously being a slave isn't the move and Black Adam has had enough of it, inspiring his fellow slaves to stand up and rise up in the name of hope and take back the land that has been stolen from them so many times. Much like Wakanda and its vibranium, with its origins not being based in reality, the same could be said for Kondok and its magical rock, um... Uh... Um... Eh, fuck it. It doesn't matter because we're then introduced to the characters assembled by Amanda Waller to take down this menace known as Black Adam. As a side note, I would like to say that I appreciate Viola Davis's Amanda Waller showing up in multiple films to at least provide some form of structure to this shit show that we got going on here at Warner Brothers. It reminds me of Nick Fury in a way and reminds me, the fan and the audience member, that people still have some sort of an idea of what's going on inside of their own universe. Waller knows about the Justice League and its many rogue heroes, anti-heroes, and villains out there, and I just appreciate her performance every single time. Also, DC is obsessed, and I mean like, obsessed, with introducing characters through montage edits. It's like the weirdest and the funniest thing, and at this point, it has to be some type of inside joke over there, because it's so childish and lazy, and I imagine that they're just re-watching it all back, like, wow, this is so incredible, and it honestly just makes me pity laugh for them, like, man, it is funny. <laughs> All right, back to the movie. We're introduced to the Justice Society, and it's crazy because I actually had a chick next to me in the movie theater that asked if this was the Justice League, and I was like, oh god, your parents and your boyfriends have failed you. We have Hawkman, Dr. Fate, Adam Smasher, Cyclone, and... Oh, wait, never mind, that looks like it's it. That's the squad that we're going to send in to fuck up the newly awakened Black Adam. Yeah, okay, I'm sure it will be fine. Not a great plan. Meanwhile, our human characters that we've been following are Isis with her brother and her son Amon, as well as generic longtime friend that's going to eventually sell you out by the end of the movie, and I don't remember his name, so we're gonna go ahead and call him Not Sabak. God, it was so, so obvious. Who have been searching and now successfully have found the crown of Sadak, a crown possessing the strength of seven demons of hell who apparently have the power scaling to rival the likes of Black Adam. Keep a note on that. For the next 45 minutes to an hour, we then have round one, round two, round three, continuous rounds of Black Adam versus the Justice Society, specifically Hawkman for the most of it. Pause. 
which I'm not going to lie, was pretty awesome because of how OP they made Hawkman. Obviously, Dr. Fate is the strongest of the crew, but in a straight-up Taijutsu hand-to-hand -hand combat, it was pretty cool to watch Hawkman actually get to be a character and display some strength. He had genuine scenes of dialogue between himself and Black Adam, understanding and explaining the different philosophies between the two, while the connection between he and Dr. Fate brought the emotion with the two having easily the most emotional highlight of the film. Fast forwarding to the third act, Natsabak reveals himself to be a traitor and an evil guy who's willing to kill kids. I don't know why we keep doing this in superhero films, it's like, what the fuck, this is a big jump my guy, but okay. I guess his goal is just to basically become Satan anyway, so eh, fuck it. Natsabak steals the crown and achieves his destiny of becoming real Sabak, so he's that now. With Black Adam and the Justice Society now facing a common enemy, we line up all of the cliches that we can fit into the third act of a superhero film and throw them all in there all at once. Come to find out, the Black Adam that we've been watching was never Kondok's true champion. It was his son. No way! Tis hat, Mr. Crab. He was number one! And now our Black Adam is able to become Black Adam because of a transfer method that was easy as Cash App. Like, oh, I guess we can just transfer the powers that you were specifically chosen for, but fuck it. Then immediately dies after transferring those powers of Shazam to Black Adam. Or, I guess, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All of that stuff's kind of confusing. Like, man, how unlucky. The movie threw in a quote at me that was supposed to be something like, with great power comes great responsibility, and I'm pretty sure it went something like, he wanted to save others, but he couldn't save himself. Something like that. It was so fucking dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we brought out all of the cliches, and it was absolutely hilarious. The Rock proceeds to finish me off with a nice CGI battle with Satan. He rips him in half. The Justice Society fucks off, and Amanda Waller brings in Henry Cavill's Superman as a post credit scene, which I'm pretty sure was just confirmed midway through recording this video. So, Henry Cavill's back. That's real now. I don't know if The Rock did that, but... He's here. Like I said, this is nothing that we haven't seen before. But the reason why I think so many people are having this type of reaction to a cliche superhero flick starring Dwayne The Rock fucking Johnson is not because this is something we haven't seen before. It's something we haven't seen in a long time. As a society, we're freaking out about the bare minimum. And that's just where we are. Over the last two to three weeks, the divisiveness in the quote-unquote critic and casual moviegoer and entertainment watcher has become noticeably astounding. With the series finales of She-Hulk, The Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, and the release of Black Adam, you can now clearly see where the disconnect is between the targeted audiences of each and every media that I mentioned above. And trust me when I say this, I truly don't care what people watch. Watch whatever puts a smile on your face at the end of the day, I just want all avenues to lead back to me. Call me Thanos. My point is, is that Hollywood and the woke culture completely misses the point of what media and entertainment is supposed to be. Entertaining and fun. I don't go to the cinema to watch writers and studios tell me how I should feel, or how I should think, or how I should or should not be accepting in my own personal life. I really don't care, especially in my superhero films. There's genres out there that could mesh well with that, that Hollywood is trying to promote. And even in films like Captain America Winter Soldier, Civil War, or even this very film Black Adam, you can insert messages like they're like slavery or the cycle of oppression that certain cultures, countries, and its peoples could face, and the lack of actual help that those countries, cultures, or certain peoples could receive. Media is a form of expression. Everyone is okay with that. I mean, everyone. What people aren't okay with is you telling them how they should feel about it, Display your message and just leave it at that. If I only walk away thinking, wow, that was a stupid CGI clusterfuck of a superhero movie with The Rock in it, then fine. If I walk away thinking how I could help more oppressed countries than mine, or more educated in that way of life or that way of thinking, that is also fine. But until everyone from critics to casuals, chads to incels, women to men and gay to straight, the divisiveness from shows like She-Hulk, The Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, and yes now, Black Adam, will never go away. Black Adam was a fun-ass movie. Dr. Fate? Chef's kiss. What an absolutely amazing character with incredible screen presence. Like, please sir, don't switch scenes. Just keep it on this man. Hawkman was OP and a pretty solid leader, honestly. And well, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But he was actually a character. 
himself in a way, but he demanded the screen with his charisma, and I could say that he was truly dedicated to the role of Black Adam. It really feels like the character was made for him. And honestly, this is the first time in a while where I'm excited to see what DC can do for its future. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And while I have a lot of things in the work, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to tackle this House of Dragons video. Another time, I guess. Right, YouTube stuff. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave those comments, but you guys are pretty good with that, honestly. But more importantly, how do we feel about this divide when it comes to the entertainment watching culture that we have here in the West? We need to have a talk about it, and soon. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.